good evening and welcome to the Pastor Study, Faith Community Church in Geneva. I'd like to announce next Wednesday night, my wife will be speaking at Church Chat, and she's going to be speaking about special ed Christians of all ages, or you could call it Hellfire and Brimstone Teaching, if you want to focus in next Wednesday. Tonight I want to be speaking out of Daniel chapter 6 and briefly touch on a prelude for Sunday school this Sunday. <clears throat> I want to speak about Daniel and his faithfulness, about prayer, about trials and rewards. And we see that the king found favor, or David, uh, Daniel found favor with the king, and he was put in charge of all the princesses and the principles uh, of that country. And so in Daniel... Uh, chapter 6, verse 3. Then this, Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because of an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. And then in verse 4, Then the presidents and the prince sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom, and that was because of jealousy, and here he is placed over them. But they could find no occasion nor fault for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. And so there's his personality, there's his commitment to God, there's his uh, <clears throat> personality. And so when we look at that, it's because verse 5, and these people said, We shall not find an occasion against Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Otherwise, we need to trick him, and we can't find fault with him because he obeys the word of his God. And how many times, you know, our testimony, our uh, understanding is we're obeying the word of God, and so other people see that in us. And so that's our reputation. Daniel's reputation was he'll always obey the word of his God. So using that, let's trick him, and let's trick the king uh, and you see that in the verses 6 through 9. And because of jealousy and trickery, uh, they wanted to bring him down. But then we look in verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into the house, and his windows being opened in his chambers toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he had previously. Now, what the... Men did that were jealous, they tricked the king to make a law saying no one can pray to another god or another idol for 30 days, otherwise they'll be put to death. And so the king, being a man full of pride, said, oh, that's a good idea. And so he makes a decree. Now once a king makes a decree, it cannot be reversed. And so they tricked him into setting up Daniel because he, they knew Daniel was faithful and would pray. Now what's interesting in verse 10, David humbled himself in faithfulness to God. He prayed three times a day. So throughout the day, it was divided up into thirds that he would pray to God. And one of the things that I see in that verse, and many times as Christians today, uh, we miss that. He humbled himself, he kneeled and prayed. Otherwise, he was coming before God, and he knew that he was but clay. He was dust before God. And we need to remember that when we go to God in prayer. Uh, maybe we need to start kneeling more often. Or maybe we need to get in a mindset or in a position to where we're not just merely throwing up a prayer now and then, and, uh, but that we realize we humble ourselves before God. Now, in verse 11, And these men assembled themselves and found David praying and making supplication before his God. When David was praying, he was making supplication for others. And I wonder about that. What was he praying for? Because remember, he was in captivity at this time. His people, God's people, were in captivity at this time. But David, with his faithfulness, knew Oh, the king was in position, but God was in control. And in our lives, we need to realize that many times there's positions that we're in, people were under, situations that we're in, and it looks as if somebody else is in control. Only God is in control. 
And we need to remember that in all situations. And so I believe that while Daniel was praying and making supplication, he was praying for the king. He was praying for the kingdom. He was probably praying for the other prince and principles that were above him. But he was also praying for those that were oppressed, uh, those that uh, had uh, that were the pride, that were the children of God. They were his people that were in uh, in a land that was not pleasing to them at the time. And so, what do we learn when we read about Daniel six? There's a lot to read in Daniel six and say, where in our lives are we? Where can when that verse apply to our lives? We see that Daniel was faithful, he was in prayer, and there is also trials because in Daniel 6 he gets thrown into the lion's den. I'm going to talk about that Sunday morning. That's a real touching. When I, when I hear the king come uh, in the next morning and he runs over to find Daniel and see if the lions ate him up, and he says, Daniel, Daniel, did your God protect you? And Daniel says, here I am, king. Uh, if that's not touching... God and all of his love and God and all of his greatness protected Daniel. And I'll be talking about that. So in our lives, we need to know that, yes, we're faithful. And yes, we pray. And yes, there will be trials in our life. For some reason, Christians believe that, well, we're walking with God. There won't be any trials. People, we are guaranteed to have trials in our life. But also, at the end of verse chapter 6, you see that God rewarded Daniel because of his faithfulness. So remember, all of this is from God. Faithfulness, prayers, trials, rewards. And reflecting on Matthew chapter 6, verse 4. Now that's easy to remember because we're in Daniel 6, verse 4. Well, in Matthew 6, verse 4, we're told, Thy father who sees in secret shall reward thee openly. And so know that in your life, when you're faithful to God, you're in prayer, and you're going through trials, and you're trusting God, God knows that, and God honors you. And so when you go to God secretly, God rewards you openly. And so it's a situation where it doesn't look real good right now, but God was and Daniel were together before the trial. He, he, they were together after the trial, and God rewarded them. And so remember... God loved Daniel. That's why he walked him through. Not to prove to God that Daniel was faithful, but to prove to Daniel that he was faithful and that God honored that faithfulness. And so remember this. God loved Daniel, and God loves you, and God loves your family. So again, love, love, love. It's all about love because God is love.